So in this video, we're going to be talking about the HTML canvas and how we can do all of these things. We want to grab a frame from a video that's playing and put that onto a canvas. We want to see how we can convert that image from the video into grayscale. We're going to talk about how we can extract a binary image from the canvas. So we're going to take a screen grab from here, put it on the canvas, convert it to grayscale, and then grab that as an image. And then we can load that into an image tag, or we can use fetch and we can upload that to the server. We can create a new video tag and use that binary image as the poster image for that new video element. So all kinds of things that we can do with the image once we have it. So kind of a whole range of different things at different points in the process. You may never do all of these things at once, but it's good to know all the different parts. For the styles on the page, um, the video elements are going to have blue borders, canvas has gold, and image tags will have red. What we're going to do in the script is we're going to um, have this play automatically when the page loads. Whenever I click on the video, that will be the signal to load it into the canvas. Now this video element, I have a local copy of it. It's the same video that I have up on GitHub in one of my repos. So there's this MP4 file up on the server and I can set the source for my video element to point to GitHub or I can point to the local one. The only difference between the two really is if I have a different URL, if I've got a different domain for the video than I do for the web page, I run into cores issues. So the cross origin resource sharing and if those are different, I cannot work with the data from the image inside the canvas. So I can't take the image from the video, put it on the canvas, and then do anything with it. I couldn't convert it to grayscale. I couldn't export it. There's nothing that I could do with that data. And that's why I'm using the local version of it. Uh, one thing useful to note, uh, in your video player, if you've got the autoplay added, uh, as of... I think it's version 67 of Chrome, somewhere around there. Um, oh, actually, I may have had a note. No, I didn't have a note with the version. Um, if you're using autoplay, you have to add muted as the attribute as well in order to get autoplay to work. Autoplay will not work if you don't have this. So I can remove this because in my version, you can see even with that out, it's playing and that's because I'm doing it in the JavaScript. I'm doing my own version of autoplay. All right, so we'll scroll down here into the actual script. Uh, I have a link in the script here for this page in the Mozilla Developer Network. Um, this is a list of all the media events. So if you've got an audio or video player, these are all the different events that you can hook into and there's progress events for when it's being loaded as well. And you can use all of these to get different things to happen in your script. All right, so let's jump into my script right here. Now I'm listening for several events. Uh, I have an example where I'm listening for can play and there's also a can play through. So can play happens very early on. It's basically just testing to see whether or not it's capable of playing the video file that's being downloaded. And you'll know that right away. Now, once you have enough of the video to actually start playing it, that will trigger the can play through event. This is where I'm going to do my autoplay. This is where I'm calling the play event on the player. Player is my video element on the page. And if we look right up here, let player equal document get element by ID player. That is the video player. So it's the video player itself, the video element in the HTML. That's what has the can play, the can play through. There's a load event, there's an error event. So error, it failed to load entirely. Load, it's finished loading entirely. So it's got everything downloaded. We don't want to wait until that point to start playing. We want to know Okay, when is there enough video that I can start playing and the buffer will be ahead of where it's playing? That's what we're doing right here. Inside of the can play, right at the very beginning, that's where I'm adding my click event. So right here, if you click on the video, I'm going to call the method grab screen. Now this is my function, the grab screen. This isn't something that's built in. It's just something that I'm doing on the page right here. I've got a function 
called grab screen that I'm going to call. And just before we get into that, uh, I wanted to draw your attention to a few of the properties. The player has a client width and height. This is the size here on the screen. That's how big the video is on the screen. Video width and video height, these are the sizes of the original image, uh, not image, but video file. So if the file that I'm downloading is supposed to be rendered at, say, 300 pixels wide by 200 pixels high, those are the video width and height. I can change the client width and height. I can use CSS, I can use JavaScript to resize the video element to stretch the video and play it at a different size. But video width and height, that is the actual size that's inside the video file. A few other properties which may be of use to you. Current source. So with this, I can figure out, hey, did you download and start playing the WebM version or the MP4 version? Which of the versions of the video are you playing? Duration, that's how many seconds long the video is. Current time, that's where we are in the video. So current time will be zero at the very beginning. Duration is the number of seconds long that the entire file is. All right, so let's jump into the grab screen, see what we're gonna be doing when we click on the video. So I'll bring this up, and while you're looking at that, what I'm gonna do is reload the page, and we can see that the video starts playing right away. When I click on it, there we are, I've got the canvas element, and there's not a lot of difference. It's a very low saturation video, but this one is in color, this one is grayscale, and this is an image element that I extracted from the canvas. And each time I click on here, you can see that I have a different one on the canvas, different one on the canvas, different one on the canvas, and I'm adding a new image each time. So I could extract a series of them if I wanted. I could have a script that's running once every couple of seconds and grabbing a whole bunch of screenshots. And you can see there, we get lots and lots and lots of them. All right, so how do we do this? Okay, in the grab screen, I'm getting the player, I'm getting my canvas, canvas context, just like everything that you do with the canvas. I'm setting my canvas dimensions to the video width and height. So this is the actual file size. I'm calling the built-in context draw image method. This allows me to pass in an image tag or the data from another canvas or a video player. And starting at position zero, zero. So that's all it took was this one line of code to grab from the video and place it here on the canvas. Converting it into grayscale. Again, remember, if the video is coming from someplace else, I will not be able to do this. It has to be from the same domain as the HTML file. So the get image data method right here, what this is doing is giving me some parameters. Position zero, zero, so starting in the top left corner here, going to the width and height, so that's to the bottom left hand corner. We're grabbing the entire surface of the canvas and we are extracting the image data. So this gives me an object. Inside that object there is a property called data, which is an array. Every single pixel in the canvas has four values inside of it. There's a red value, a green value, a blue value, and an alpha value which is the amount of transparency. So four values for every pixel. So every pixel times four. So the width times the height times four. That is the number of elements that are inside of this data array. So width times height times four equals the length of the array. And that will be all of the values that are inside of there. Okay. Now my for loop that I'm doing here, you can see I'm incrementing by four each time. Basically, I'm looking at each pixel one after the other. And the first value is the red. The second value, which is I plus one, is the green. I plus two is the blue. I plus three is the alpha. So I'm not doing anything with the alpha, but to convert it into grayscale, like when I click on here, there we are, there's the gray. What I'm doing is I'm taking the red, green, and blue, and I can either average them 
or I can calculate. These numbers right here work fairly well to give me um, a better grayscale than just if I were to average them. They both work. So if I were to comment out this one and do this one instead. There we go. And we'll come over to the canvas. We'll click. There you go. You can see it's also grayscale. It's just a slightly different way of calculating it. You have two options here. You can do one or the other. Both of them will give you some manner of grayscale, and you may find that some videos work better with one method rather than the other. Once you've calculated this average number, you put that value back in all three. So you replace the red, the green, the blue with these. Now we've gone through the whole thing. We've updated the data property of our image data object. After the loop, we call put image data, pass in that data, and we say these are the coordinates to start doing this. So starting at 0, 0 right here, we're putting the image data back in. So it's not really until this point that the canvas changes into that gray. If I were to comment out that one line, when I click, you can see these ones are in color. So it's not that last one. I'm going through the loop. I'm changing the values in the array, but it's not until we do this that we're actually putting the updated version of the image data back into there. Okay, so we've got the video. We've grabbed a, free, a screen grab. We've thrown that one frame onto the canvas. We've converted it into grayscale. Now, the last parts were how do we get an image out of here? So I want a binary image from the canvas that I can put onto the page. I can upload to a server. I can save it as the poster image for a video or something like that. Canvas elements, not the context, but the canvas element has a two blob method. The two blob method, it's a callback. We give it a callback function here. It will give us the blob, which stands for binary large object. This is the binary data. So if I want to upload to the server, I'll create a form data object. I will append one field. So this is the label that I want to give to it, this first thing. That's the label that I want to give. The second parameter is the actual binary data. And then the third one is, well, if it's a file that we're uploading, this is the name that the server will see as the name of the image. I'm creating a request object. I just, I've got this URL that I know will accept posts. So I'm doing a post method and I'm setting my form data object that I created right here. That's the body of this message. So I'm sending that up to the server when I call fetch. Fetch, I'm passing it the request object. I'm uploading it. It's sending me back some JSON and I'm just console logging out a message. It's not actually going to give me back a, a file or anything like that. This is just a, a website for testing. If you haven't used JSON placeholder before, it's just for testing that you can actually fetch and receive data. Because it allows posts, it means I can upload the image to them. They don't keep it. They don't do anything with it. It's just a URL that I know it will work. All right. So that's the upload of the binary data. Now to put the image, if we don't do that, we don't have to do that. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the binary image from here and I'm going to place it in a new image tag. So every time this code runs, I'm creating a brand new image element. I'm taking the blob object right here and I'm passing it into the window.url.createObjectURL method. So this is a method built into the browser pass it a blob and it will create an object URL. So it's like a, a unique URL that's pointing to some binary data that's sitting in the browser right now, that's sitting on your computer. It creates this temporary URL. Then we can set the image source to that URL. Then I'm appending the image to the page. Now inside here, I'm listening for the load event on that image. I don't have to do this part, but I'm setting the URL to the 
the, the URL variable rather, to this create object URL. So that's inside of here. And then I'm putting that in the image and I'm appending the image to the page. That works to just put the image on here. I don't have to do anything else, but I do have an event listener for my load. This is, this is kind of the final step. If I wanted to at that point, let's say I all I wanted to do was run this when it's ready. I click, I grab my frame grab, and then I pause the video. I could do that here. So let's relo reload this. When I click, there we go. The video paused. It ga gave me the data on the canvas. The canvas gave me the blob to create the image, and I paused the video. So we can do that if we want. If I comment that out, there, now I've got these and the video keeps playing. So just an option for you. The, this is the poster image for the video. If I create a new video element, it has a property called poster, which will use the URL the same way as the image source uses the URL down here at the bottom. Now, whenever you do use this create object URL to create a URL pointing to a bunch of binary data on your computer, the best practice is for you to do this. Clean up the memory afterwards. Just remember that if you do this, then this image no longer exists in a way that can be accessed. It was used to put the image on the page, but if I right click and I say save image as, it's not going to give me something. It's got a URL, but this will be a dead file. I won't actually have any data there because I did this. So if this is uncommented, you lose that image. And that's it. That's the end of this whole thing. This uh, last little piece right here, this image slash PNG, that was right up here at the top. When you call canvas to blob, you have an option to get a blob, which is either a JPEG or a PNG. So you can set the MIME type down at the bottom to say what it is that you want that to be. So at the very end of this method, the second parameter is image slash PNG or image slash JPEG. All right, and that's it. That's uh, a lot of information, a lot of things to do. Like I said at the start, this isn't something that you're likely to do all of these steps ever in one place, but there's a whole bunch of bits and pieces, and it's important to know what the sequence is getting from one point to the other. All right, so if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments down below. I will leave all of this code as a code gist in the video description. And as always, thanks for watching.